Judy, look at these really cool vegetables I've grown. William, you are just such a great grower. You win the blue ribbon. <laughs> and we have more blue ribbon stories for you next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We are at the Oregon State Fair where the fair will be starting in just a few days. And later in the show, we'll be learning about how you can enter almost anything in your garden to win a blue ribbon. They even have a great category for the weird and unusual <laughs> fruits and vegetables in your garden. And on the show today, we're also gonna be doing a segment on how you can get rid of the budworm that's currently in your garden. But first, some award-winning statuary. So I'm standing here with Jared and we are at Little Baja and today we're going to be talking about statuary, Jared, because, yeah. you know, as a gardener, of course I love the plants, that's what my passion is, but there's so many little spaces in a yard that can really be dramatically changed with something as simple as a statue. You're right. It's amazing with the right piece how it can accent your garden. Well now let's talk, in the selection available, and you guys have a huge selection here, but in that selection, some of them are just fun. They're just, you know, cute, you like them. But then there's also a lot of statuary that has some specific meaning. So let's talk about that a little bit. You know, I see an awfully lot of, of the, the saints, you know, a CC, stuff like that. Sure. So let's talk about that. Well, St. Francis, um, he was a patron of ecology and animals, uh -huh. believed to be able to communicate with the animals. St. Francis saw God within all creation and believed to communicate with all the animals. I think St. Francis serves us as a reminder today to maybe reduce our creature comforts, live more simply, and uh, love silence more readily. Well, and that's lovely, and I, I couldn't agree with you more, but I also think that you know, a statue of St. Francis was also, it, it, it harkens to that part of us that loves nature in the sense of animals as well as gardening, so it's a great combination. Very true. And I, you know, I see an awful lot, too, of the, uh, the more India and Asian statues sitting around, too. Sure. Those also have a very rich history of what they mean, don't they? Oh, they sure do. Um, we get a lot of questions that ask, you know, what does this Buddha mean? And really it breaks down to, what does this pose represent? Because yeah. there's so many different poses. And we carry a lot of the more popular ones, the happy Buddhas, yeah. <laughs> the meditation Buddha. So really, um, any Buddha is really gonna accent your space and really turn it into that tranquil sanctuary you might be going for. But uh, either, you know, either way, they're all really nice and they're gonna accent your garden just Well, and, and we were talking earlier today, Jared, about a space that you went to and it was just a very small space with gravel. And what did you add there to change that? You know, we brought a big, tall standing Buddha, and it was amazing how it transformed this gravel lot yeah. into a tranquil rock garden for yeah. meditation. You know, I love that because that's so true. Sometimes it just, you know, you'll look in your garden and you'll see a space and you'll think, what do I put there? What plant do I put there? And sometimes a statue, a, a lantern, makes all the difference in the world. Oh, it really pulls it all together. So Jared, you know, I do see a lot of Quan Yin statues around here. Mm -hmm. Those also have some specific meanings. Oh, they sure do. Uh, Quan Yin was the goddess of mercy and compassion, um, akin to the way a mother feels for a child. Yeah. You know, a little more fiercely protective and fiercely loving than we associate with the word compassion. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. And what about animals? I mean, I, I know that they might have some specific meanings to people. Sure, you know, um, sometimes if someone has a, a pet that might pass, um, they can mark that site in their yard that they've kind of yeah. dedicated to that animal. You know, but they're great just to add to the garden and it really brings that spirit right to your garden, yeah. that, uh, that totem of energy from that animal that now exists in your, in your place. So some folks associate with a wolf, sometimes it's a bear, uh, but either way, when's that place in the garden, it really brings that energy right to their place. So, you know, and the fun thing too is you can, you can really pick out, you have such a great selection here, first of all, it's really amazing. So you can really pick out the one that perfectly fits your space. Right, you'll know when you see it. All right, well, if you're looking for a statue for your garden, come on down to Little Baja, you can go to gardenmag.tv, we'll take you over to their website, pick out that statue that absolutely defines exactly what you want in your garden space. Thanks a lot, Jerry. All right, thanks. I am at the Oregon State Fairgrounds and I'm with Ken Graves and Ken, what are your duties here with FAIR? Well, my wife and I are co-chairs of the Farm, Garden and Floral Division of the FAIR and uh, we oversee the competition of the uh, vegetables and other plants. 
uh, including, as a matter of fact, uh, container gardening. Uh, we have a division where people can bring in their containers wow. and uh, display them. And there's also a cut flower uh, arrangement category. So just about anything you can imagine. <laughs> as a matter of fact, last year, a young man cut out a about a 1940 dictionary, one of the big ones, mm -hmm. and that's what he used as a container for uh -huh. his uh, plantings. Of course, uh -huh. he won a ribbon. That is very clever. So you can win prizes too. That's really oh, yes. nice. Oh yes, yes, yeah. We have uh, uh, three levels: blue, red, and white. Uh, and so, can anyone join and enter things, or is there age limits, or what about that? Anybody can join, and there are uh, age divisions. Uh, we have uh, the children and, and young adults, and then we have the adults. Ah. And so, you know, some friends of mine, the producers of Garden Time, grew this lovely tomato. And so yeah. I think it's beautiful, but it is also very strange, too. <laughs> yes, it is. And we have a category exactly for that, <laughs> the strangest vegetable. <laughs> And we've had some very strange vegetables. Uh, and it's it's not just vegetables and flowers and all that. There's also a scarecrow division. There is. There is. Uh, as creative as you can be. And uh, people have been very creative in the past. Uh, so give us some points on you know all of those particulars and how do we get involved in that? Absolutely the easiest thing in the world. You go to Garden Times um, website and they have a link there with the Oregon State Fair and it will take you to the place you need to uh, be to enter and uh, if you miss that uh, then we will take people at the last minute okay. when we uh, take uh, input on the 25th. Right, and so I have the information right here. So on August 25th, it's next Thursday from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., you can bring your entries and it's at the Columbia Hall right here at the fairgrounds and you want to um, go in through the 17th Street entrance and follow the signs and then you'll get right here and get to Ken and his staff. Right, and we really prefer that people register on online because that gives us the advantage of having all their paperwork done. Sure. But uh, if for some reason they can't or haven't, uh, they can register on the spot. Ken, if people miss that date of next Thursday, there is a second date and it actually is the 31st. It's a Wednesday from 7 a.m. to 8.30. So why a second one? Well, there are several reasons. First of all, some people aren't ready until later. Uh, their flower hasn't come to its full bloom or their vegetable isn't perfect or something, and they need just a couple more days. So we do have a, a competition for the second half of the fair. Ah, on the 31st, there's something else going on that day. What's that? Well, it's Ag Court Day, and uh, we are gonna have a panel of master gardeners on stage to answer uh, people's questions. Ah, well, so there's no excuses not to enter. The bounty from your garden or the beautiful flowers from your flower garden, you can even bring a scarecrow if you're into scarecrows and come out and participate because it's so much fun to be a part of the fair. So don't forget to go to the website, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website and you can fill out the paperwork and find out all the information. We'll have a wonderful fair. Yes, thank you. And, and you know, I, ne I never uh, miss learning something. Last year there were uh, a couple plants that, I've been a master gardener since 2003, and I wasn't aware of them. One of them was ground cherries. I had never Ooh. heard of ground cherries. And somebody brought them in and entered them. So we learned something out of it as well. Yeah, that is so true. So I'm, here you have all the information right here. So see you at the fair. Thanks so much, Ken. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save five dollars on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good, deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Enjoy a summer of art and color. 
visit the Oregon Garden for Art in the Garden, now through September 30th, sponsored by Capital Subaru. See over a dozen pieces of outstanding and inspired art that represent both traditional and modern styles, carefully placed throughout the garden. A series of related workshops will also be featured during this event. For details on Art in the Garden and a schedule of events, go to OregonGarden.org. Make a difference for a local family fighting cancer and enter the Fight for Your Life 5K on September 25th at French Prairie Gardens. Register at FightForYourLife5K.com. The dahlias are blooming and the fields are open. Stop by Swan Island Dahlias in Canby and stroll the 40 acres of blooms. And don't forget the Dahlia Festival the last weekend in August and Labor Day weekend. During the festival, you can see over 400 cut flower displays, enjoy specialty foods, and see flower arranging demonstrations. While you visit, you can also order your favorites for next spring. Visit the Swan Island Dahlia Farm in Canby, just 30 minutes south of Portland. So it is that time of year when we've done a bunch of work in our gardens. We have some beautiful flower baskets here. I'm here with Tom Cones from Bonide, and we are going to be talking about a specific little creature that a lot of times attacks our beautiful flowers. Mm -hmm. So it's called the budworm. That's correct. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it is called the budworm. Um, sometimes it's known as the geranium budworm or flower budworm, uh -huh. and they love to come out and attack, especially the, the flowering petunia baskets, yeah. which we're right in that season right yeah. now. Um, probably in the next seven to ten days the little insect will come out. Now one of the things that I like about this product that we're going to be talking about which is Captain Jack's is it's first of all it's an organic yes. from Bonite. So tell us how people can just look at the container and know besides the tag that it's organic. Okay so let's be careful with uh, how we say organic because uh, it's more so a natural product. Okay. So the active ingredient is called spinosad mm -hmm. it's, and it works biologically. Um, at Bonide, we try to color code our label, and if you'll notice the tan shoulder yeah. on the label, we're trying to communicate that the active ingredient in here is a natural product. Okay. So for all of the chewing and sucking insects, this will control that insect, whether it's a white fly or a thrips or the budworm, which we're talking about yeah. today, and it'll do it in a natural way. So now, how would I, how would I go about, like, how would I know I have that? What are the, the signs I'm going to look for? Well, again, we're in, we're in that time of year. And uh, as you can see, this petunia basket is in full bloom. Yeah. And you'll start to see notches or holes in the flower of the basket or the plant. Um, they don't necessarily chew on the buds, as you can see here, but they go right after the open flower. Yeah. So you'll see notching or holes in the leaf. And then sometimes, uh, the insect will get so bad virtually overnight, they will strip the entire basket, really? that, all of its flowers. That quickly? That quickly. Wow. So, Tom, what does the budworm look like? So, the budworm or the flower budworm uh, is a caterpillar. Oh. So, sometimes uh, pale green, sometimes it's tan. It's about a quarter to a half inch long, and it typically lives on the stem of the petunia vine. So it would be hard to see if it's that color, Very much it? hard to see. And in the daytime, it tends to kind of hide be behind the flower. And then in the evening, it comes out and does its damage. And then I'm assuming, being a caterpillar, it's probably going to do its business somewhere on the plant as well. So those little black spots you sometimes see, is that, that that's That it? is a telltale sign right. right there. You'll see the, the excretion yeah. uh, of uh, what they have fed on. OK. Yeah. Can you use this then as a preventative as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. You can use this as a preventative. Again, it's a natural product. Or if you have the insect, it'll take care of it um, from a uh, from a control standpoint. Well, and one of the things I like about Captain Jack's is it also covers a lot of other plants in the garden, not yes. just flowers. Not just flowers, not just annuals and perennials, but this is also safe for all of our, well, I shouldn't say all, but most of our fruit-bearing plants. Yeah, yeah, so and you can use it in your gardens for vegetables, for the stuff like yeah. that. So, and it covers a host of different uh, yeah. problems, too, that you want to avoid. So when you go to your gar independent garden center, look for the Bonite product with the brown little corner here. That'll tell you that it's a, a natural product. And thank you so much, Tom. And you can always go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the website, find out who's carrying it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Buying a new vehicle should be something you look forward to. So when you come to Capital Subaru, bring your pup, 
practice your swing, go for a walk, and relax. Our personally tailored service makes it easy for you to find your ideal Subaru. While you enjoy the service, selection, and amenities, you simply won't find at any other dealership. Get a deal you'll love now during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. Lease the new 2016 Subaru Legacy 2.5i Premium CVT, just $224 per month, or get 0% APR for 72 months. Get it your way on the Parkway. Nestled in the oaks of the Willamette Valley is a nursery that is truly exceptional. At Out in the Garden Nursery, you will find a vast array of shade plants, ornamental grasses, and hardy perennials. Let us help you bring color and texture into your garden. We offer over 100 types of perennials. Many of our plants are evergreen for year-round interest. Plus, we offer the best in personal attention. Out in the Garden Nursery, where we grow great gardens one plant at a time. The dahlias are blooming and the fields are open. Stop by Swan Island Dahlias in Canby and stroll the 40 acres of blooms. And don't forget the Dahlia Festival the last weekend in August and Labor Day weekend. During the festival, you can see over 400 cut flower displays, enjoy specialty foods, and see flower arranging demonstrations. While you visit, you can also order your favorites for next spring. Visit the Swan Island Dahlia Farm in Canby, just 30 minutes south of Portland. Here we are in the middle of summer and I'm with Jan McNeilan. Hey Jan, how Hi. you doing? Good. Well, so there's always something going on in the garden, so what should we be talking about today? Well, I wanted to show you this, these aren't, they're outdoor plants in the summer, but, um, and some of them are hardy, but I, I take them in. These are gardenias mm -hmm. and want to talk a little bit about nutrient uh, problems with plants that tell you uh, <laughs> very <you're> clearly <laughs> uh, what's wrong okay. as long as you know what to look for. This gardenia is healthy. It, nice it, it needs uh, less nitrogen, and I need to give it a, a fertilizer that is not as high in nitrogen, so it'll set some buds. But right now, it's nice and healthy. But this one is not, and I've purposely yeah. left it this way. Uh, this is a magnesium deficiency. And how can you tell? Uh, you can because the veining is dark, and then the side veins are called reticulated, meaning okay. it's just kind of webbing or. A, uh, on each of the main veins. So that's telling me it's magnesium. So all I need to do is take some Epsom salts, just plain old, you buy it at the uh, pharmacy, and about a tablespoon or so. Okay. And all I'm gonna do is just put it on the plant okay. and uh, water it, it in, top okay. dress it, water it in, and in no time it'll start to, they'll start to green up. And so when you see that kind of a problem, it's magnesium, but if it was just an all along, like just washed out, it probably just need a general fertilizer? Well, it may just be nitrogen okay. if it's yellowing. And what I have here all is right, we a got one uh, right there. nutrient deficiency chart. You can actually go on Google Images and put on in nutri nutrient deficiency for leaves. Uh -huh. And you'll come up with all sorts of different charts like this. Oh, wonderful. Uh, that will show you what you're looking at. You huh. can take a look at your plant and maybe tell what uh, what the issue is. Oh, that's nice. Nice to be a diagnostician. Right, a diagnostician for oh, sure. Right, and then what else? Well, it's pear season mm, it for is. sure. Uh, if you have a pear tree and you're wondering when to pick them, all you do is put your hand underneath and just pull up and if it snaps off, it's ready to pick. Then you put it in a cool place, a basement or a cool garage or whatever you have, a cool spot. And, and, uh, and then they'll ripen off the tree. If you ripen oh. them on the tree, you'll end up with them mushy in the middle mm. and grainy. So it's better to pick them all at the same time and, and store them and then just bring them out into a warm environment and, and uh, ripen them a little at a time so you can enjoy them longer. Enjoy them longer, that for sure. That is nice. For sure. And then what else we have to talk about? Well, this was full of strawberry plants, and what I did is I actually took the weed whacker. <laughs> That's a great through. idea. <laughs> I used to mow them when they were in the, a, a row, but um, these are just, um, a, a, these are not ever-bearing strawberries. These are the annual June type. Um, so I just cut them all back and then throw a little balanced fertilizer on them because now they're going to set blossoms and set fruit for next year. Oh, okay. So this is the time to do it. It doesn't look like much and there's some, you can tell where the weeds are. Right. But this, and, and this, all this growth that you see here now 
it just came up just in the last week or so. Well, nice. Uh, so they'll the plants will come back. They won't look like much at, at first, but they'll come back, and then you'll have a better harvest next year. And it's really something to do because it will be a better harvest. If yeah. you don't, you just yeah. won't get the fruit. Yeah, you won't get as much. All right. And then what about veggies for fall harvest? Um, the Growing Your Own Tabloid from OSU that we've ah, talked yes. about in the past, mm -hmm. if you guys put a, a, a link on, sure. on your website for it, you can go there and look at the charts and see what you can plant, say some green beans or late peas or uh, some of the fall season crops. There's a lot of them there and it'll tell you based on where you live right. uh, when it's uh, still we have still enough time. All right. Well, you heard it here. We have lots of links <laughs> for you, lots of information for you. Go out in your garden, enjoy it, and we'll see Jan next month. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Welcome to Drake's, not your ordinary garden center. Grab a cup of coffee at Antonio's and wander the nursery for the perfect plan. Check out the landscape design showrooms for ideas, then meet with a designer. Come pick out a bouquet of flowers for dinner or for that someone special. Find something distinctive for your home or your garden. Imagine the possibilities and let Drake's turn them into realities. Drake's 7Ds on Southwest Shoals Ferry Road in Portland. It's summer clearance time at Standard TV and Appliance. Save up to 77% on closeouts, overstocks, floor models, and special purchases at Standard, including refrigerators and freezers, washers and dryers, ranges, wall ovens, and cooktops, top brand dishwashers, beauty rest and memory foam mattresses, HD TVs, and home theater. Plus, save up to 61% on display and discontinued pro style appliances. Only while they last. Standard TV and Appliance. Judy, yep. do you remember when I asked you if you liked me? I mean, if you really liked me? Yeah, I liked you on Facebook. Yeah, well, I need you to do that again. Well, we really need everyone to like the new Facebook page for Garden Time. So you just go to gardentime.tv and click on the Facebook icon and like us again for our brand new page. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Well, you know, you know if you watch this show that we love flowers and we love wonderful women. And I'm surrounded by both today. And we are here at the Clackamas County Fair in Canby, Oregon. And we're going to be talking about what, what it takes to be a judge and, and who are the women that actually have stepped up here to do the judging. So let's start with names. And Jeanette, I'm going to start with you. What's your name? Jeanette Benson. Okay. And do you always say it with a laugh? Is that yes. okay? And you are? Donna Cotton. And? Garnet Asher. And you? Sally Thompson. Beverly Seibel. Karen Pfaff. Karen. Now, I, I would like to know, I'm going to do this again really quick, but I want to know how long each of you have been judging at this one competition here. Uh, this is five years for wow. me. Ooh. Ten or twelve. About the same time. Ten or twelve? Mm -hmm. <laughs> About that time. Five. Five. Ten or twelve. Ten or twelve. Ten or twelve. So this is something that you guys are obviously passionate about. You come back every year at the fair here and you do it. And so now I want to ask a, a little bit of, about what, what is the judging? How do you get to it? How do you become a judge? Uh, you just find out where the schools are and you start schools. And of course, in the meanwhile, you're learning sure. all the time, sure. learning names, how to do it and growing it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're experiencing, you're taking the information and actually working on it in your own garden. That's right. Excellent, excellent. And you? We have classes through National Garden Clubs, which is all over the whole United States. and through South America wow. and we all are, learn the same way. We do the same classes. We Excellent. have four classes now. We used to do five classes and then we uh, write a schedule so we know how to do a show. Yeah. So what are, I, I'm, a, I'm going to assume that there's some guidelines that you follow. What, what would those be in judging a flower? Um, peak of perfection. Really? Well, thank you. 
Is that, no, you're, you're not talking about me, are you? <laughs> no, no. So what does that mean, p- peak of perfection? Um, for that particular variety. Oh, okay. And um, we don't want any dry leaves. We don't want, we want crisp, turgid leaves. Sure. Um, flowers that are um, sunny and bright. So Donna, what do you look for? I look for the quality of the flower, uh, the size, the shapes, the, um, and of course we go by botanical names sure. if possible sure. so that we are learning. I mean, we try and give as much education so that people will know exactly. what to do. which is smart. And how about you? Uh, we were looking at it's, it's 100 points that you're trying for perfection. Sure. And you're trying to get as close to that as possible. So how is it that people would, would actually get to join in and bring a flower here? Well, every show, a county or any other type of show, has a schedule. Yeah. You must read it and you must follow it. If it says three stems, three stems. It, uh, just, there's just no, no difference in that. If it says a one kind of flower, don't put different kinds in. Sure, sure. It's a very, very simple thing. Just, just follow and read exactly everything because we have to disqualify things. If they're not following the or guidelines, they, get they just... what we call HM, honorable mention, uh, the bottom. Perfect. Because it could have been good otherwise. Yeah. In, fact, in fact, it upsets us that we don't. Right. But they need to keep growing and they keep bringing it in and keep trying and so trying. So what was the quote you told me? To... You have to grow in order to, to show. show. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> And so for most fairs, you, you have to follow those rules and you can get that information from their websites. That's correct. Well, you know, there's a lot of fun things in horticulture. We know that. That's why we all love to garden. And one of the things is becoming a judge. So if you would like more information on how you too can do that, you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to the uh, county fairs website here. And then you can really come out and have a great fun. These, these gals are a riot. And you can have great friends and have great fun and even learn more about the things we love the most, which are flowers. Ladies, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for thank asking you. us. Thank you, William. William, you won the blue ribbon for Weird and Wonderful. Oh, thank you, Judy. It's really for the tomatoes. <laughs> And if you would like to find out if something from your garden can win an award at the State Fair, go to Gardentime.tv. And if you have any other questions about today's show, you can also go to Gardentime.tv. Thanks for watching today and stay cool in this warm summer weather. And we'll see you again next week right here on Garden Time. Judy, yep. do you remember when I asked you if you liked me? I mean, if you really liked me? Yeah, I liked you on Facebook. Yeah, well, I need you to do that again. Well, we really need everyone to like the new Facebook page for Garden Time. So you just go to gardentime.tv and click on the Facebook icon and like us again for our brand new page. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.